Hi, I'm Marlon, and I'm a dark sky ambassador for the International Astronomical Union. Today, I'm speaking on behalf of the Globe at Night Project and the stars. The stars of the Milky Way have been shining on Earth long before there was even an Earth, when Earth was nothing more than particles floating in space and eventually coalescing to become this ball we call our home. Wrong ball. The stars have been the silent sentinels shimmering over the oceans where life began. The stars were such a constant that we used them to navigate across the seas and across the land as humanity spread across the face of the earth. Civilization sprung up because by studying the stars, we knew when to plant and when to harvest. The stars have been the inspiration for the oldest stories ever told. Stories we are still telling today. And with the invention of the telescope, the secret lives of the stars slowly began to reveal themselves. Night after night, the stars shine down on us as we looked up at them. Until the invention of electricity, in 1882, the Pearl Street Generating Station came online in New York City and powered 400 of Edison's fabulous new invention, the incandescent light bulb. Within two years, there were 10,000 light bulbs now being illuminated. And that number has continued to grow ever since, even to this day, 137 years later. Today, this is what our Earth looks like at night from space. It is as if the stars themselves fell out of the heavens and landed on Earth. There is so much light coming off of the Earth now that 80% of North Americans and Europeans can no longer see the Milky Way. It's ironic, isn't it, that starlight that has traveled millions of light years to reach our eyes is being shouted out right at the finish line, a few feet above our heads because of our street lights. Our night has changed so dramatically, so quickly and so suddenly, we didn't even see it happen. We were in the dark about our light. In the 20th century, very few people have taken time to take the measurements and document how we have lost our view of the night sky and the stars. People who grew up in the 40s, 50s, and 60s can no longer see the stars they did when they were children. Go ask your grandparents. Is Earth faded to grow ever brighter? Will we forever lose the beauty of the night sky and our connection to the universe? If we can no longer see the heavens that we belong to, how long before we forget that we belong to the heavens? Is humankind ingenious enough to have the best of both worlds? I believe it is, because if we have the ability to populate space with our technology, we certainly have the ability to light our cities in ways that are safely, softly, and beautifully illuminated. How are we to change the future that we are headed for? In the Globe at Night Project, you make measurements which will help prevent a future of total light pollution. Measurements will raise awareness of light pollution to people and governments around the world. Here's how Globe at Night works. You don't need any special equipment. You measure light pollution by going out at night and figuring out what stars you can see at night in one of the common constellations like Orion. We compare what we can see with star charts on our cell phone or with the star charts that we printed earlier, like these. If there's a lot of light pollution, you won't see many stars, and your view may match star charts like this. 
If there's almost no light pollution, your view may match star charts like this. What does the sky look like where you live? It's easy to find out. On a clear night in February or March, go outside after the sun has set and before the moon has come up. Wait until your eyes adjust to the darkness and tell us what you see. The more observations we get, the more accurate our measurements and data will be. So please share this with your friends, with your families, on your social networks, and especially with your children and grandchildren. Thank you for taking the time to preserve your dark skies.